Hi there. My name is Peter Crott. I'm a nomination candidate for the Federal Conservative Party for the riding in North Vancouver. I'm also, by profession, a chemical environmental engineer. I've dealt a lot with virtually every industry in Canada, including the petroleum industry, including investigating pipeline ruptures, and many things related to hydrocarbons. Today I want to talk to you about three things. The movement of oil and petroleum in Canada to world markets. It moves by rail car, by tanker, and by pipeline. So I brought along some very sophisticated engineering equipment so that I could help explain all these issues. First of all, what are hydrocarbons? Well, hydrocarbons are a lot like licorice. In fact, bitumen can be represented by licorice. Licorice is a long chain hydrocarbon. It has at least 12 carbons, C12, H22, O11. So at 12 hydrocarbons, it's pretty much like jet fuel. So when you give it to your kids to eat and they start rushing around, it's because you've just fed them jet fuel. And while they're burning the jet fuel, they're breathing out carbon dioxide, much like our cars do, our trains, and our planes. So it, to an engineer, it's very similar to any other fuel that we look at. It's not that strange to us, but I need to explain it a little bit better. The problem is, in Canada, we cannot get our hydrocarbons, particularly bitumen, to world markets. So we don't get world prices, and we spend a lot more money getting it there. And one of the prime ways that we get it there is by rail car. So you have to have an engine, you have to have a tanker on the end, and then you have to load it with bitumen. The thing is, you can't just put bitumen in here because these very long chain molecules get tangled up. So we have to dilute them. And we dilute them with something called a diluent, which is a light oil. So that light oil gets mixed up with the heavy oil and bitumen. In fact, it gets mixed up so that we have about 30% of light oil to 70% of bitumen. That's a lot of extra weight. And when you ship it like on a rail car, it kind of looks like this. That's a lot of smoke coming out of engines. And that's because we're burning all that energy to move a rail car, which weighs about 29,000 tons, filled with about 30% of oil that we're never going to use. This gets shipped 3,500 kilometers from northern Alberta to the Gulf of Mexico, where it gets loaded onto a tanker, like this. So now we're putting 30% oil plus 70% bitumen onto a tanker and shipping it overseas to the mega refineries in Southeast Asia, where they will unload it from the tanker, separate the bitumen out, and put it to the side. And then they may even load this diluent back on the, rail, on the tanker and ship it back to Canada. All that extra energy gone to waste. It's true, shipping bitumen is both wasteful and also hazardous to the environment, especially in rail cars, which are so much more prone to accident. So what's the alternative to that? Well, the oil industry in Canada has been trying to get a pipeline to Tidewater. And the thing is, if we refined the bitumen in Alberta using a, what's called an upgrader, we would actually not have to use this because the molecules would be much smaller. It would give us 30% more room in the pipeline and we could ship other things like gasoline. Why is that important? Well, have you ever bought gasoline in the lower mainland in the last little while? There is actually a spur line on the current Kinder Morgan pipeline that goes to Washington State to the Cherry Point Refinery, where that oil is refined into gasoline products and then sent back to Canada to the Lower Mainland at world prices. In Washington State, it's being refined by American engineers, scientists, and oil workers, and the taxes are being paid to Washington State. And then it's being sold to us at high prices. There's something that needs to be done about that. What needs to be done is we need to have our pipeline capacity. The government has to ensure that there's a strong regulatory regime that oversees that the pipeline is built and operated at the best possible technology. 
the industry has to operate it in such a way that there is virtually no chance of spill. And I'm a chemical engineer, I've prosecuted pipeline ruptures, and I know that oil spills happen. But if we can refine it into a much lighter product, then it's not going to sink like bitumen. So it only makes sense. Plus, we can get it to world markets at world prices. And that extra revenue comes back as taxes that we can do many things with. For example, we can promote alternative energy. We can lower costs on things like insulation and thermopane windows. We can also use it to enhance our environment. We can restore habitat. We can fund hatcheries for salmon. And this will be a benefit to the environment as well. We have to be vigilant, but we have to be smart because the environment and the economy are two things that are now intimately bound together. And that's why I'm asking for your support in the upcoming nomination and in the 2019 election. My name is Peter Cron, and I'm asking for your support, and I really appreciate the time you've invested today. Thanks, and have a great day.